The top stories, Ethiopian envoy says BRICS should create alternative international monetary system. And religious scholars urge world leaders to collaborate with religious organizations to find remedies for challenges facing the globe. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to EBC World with me, Shifa Raulako, and thank you for watching us. Now, the Danish Council for Development Policy announces its commitment to cementing cooperation with Ethiopia in the agriculture sector. Minister of Agriculture Grima Amante received a Danish delegation led by chairperson of the Danish Development Policy Council, Anne Meda Kiar. In their discussion, the two sides stressed the need for Denmark to strengthen its support and partnership with Ethiopia in the agriculture sector. Girma explained about the activities Ethiopia has been undertaking over the last five years to mitigate the impact of climate change on the agriculture sector, citing the planting of 32.78 seedlings as exemplary in this regard. The minister also indicated that the irrigated wheat farming and the bounty of basket or Yelimat Trufat initiatives are contributing their part in advancing agriculture. The delegation for its part pledged the commitment of the Danish government to continue collaboration with Ethiopia in the efforts to transform the agriculture sector. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, has launched the Highlands Resilience Activity, a 60 million U.S. dollars initiative in Hawassa City, Ethiopia. The program is set to connect 120,000 vulnerable households to markets and financial resources to improve their livelihoods. Over the next five years, the Highlands Resilience Activity will be led by Mercy Corps with support from local NGOs and will operate in six regions. That is Amhara, Tigray, Oromia, Sidama, South and Central Ethiopia, the USAID stated. Ethiopia and the U.S. are celebrating 120 years of partnership. And now moving to business news, Ethio Telecom, Ethiopia's state-owned telecom giant, has launched a new feature on its Telebur super app known as Telebur Engage, where customers can transact, socialize, and share via text, image, QR codes, audio, and video within a unified platform. With this feature, customers can easily exchange information, enrich their business transactions, and enhance social engagement free of internet charge and settle digital payments in addition to Telebur's existing multiple function, Ethio Telecom CEO Freyo Tamru said.
Welcome back. You're still watching ABC World. Now, the BRICS members should work together to strengthen their economies. Ethiopian ambassador to Russia, Cham Ugala Uriat, has told the RT. The ambassador said that it is vital for BRICS to create an alternative international monetary system. The ambassador stated the bloc's members should collaborate to enhance their economies and create a new alternative to the global monetary system. The Shanghai-based New Development Bank, NDB, established by the BRICS states, which is also open for business in 2015, should be strengthened so that it can contribute to member states of BRICS, the ambassador said. Parliamentarians and ambassadors from Brazil, China, Ethiopia, Egypt, India, Iran, Russia, South Africa, and United Arab Emirates familiarized themselves with the stands of Russian regions and visited the Atom Pavilion in the Russia Expo. Take a look. Of uh, Brexit, uh, investment in economy, yes. And another uh, aspect of it is people and culture and security. These are the main pillars uh, of BRICS uh, initiative. Economically, uh, these countries have to work together, uh, you know, to find the alternative uh, international monetary system, right? Uh, for now, uh, there is a new development bank uh, under the BRICS, right? I think we have to strengthen uh, this uh, bank so that can contribute to the, the, the member state of uh, BRICS nations. So I think this will be really, definitely will be the alternative than, you know, uh, like the IMF and the World Bank groups and so, so, so forth. What, what, what is good is, uh, you know, we had already a bilateral, you know, relation uh, before. So we, we are now working on that and uh, increasing our relations because BRICS platform is very good, bringing uh, a lot of uh, experiences. So experience sharing by itself is good. But uh, to make it sure, yes, we have a bilateral relation before with Russia. We work on many uh, different issues. But now is, this is uh, the plus for us. There are a lot of uh, engagement. There are a lot of uh, meeting. And uh, Russia, they put, you know, more than 100, 250 uh, event. Yeah? during their uh, chairmanship. So a lot of things yes, to, to work, a lot of things to do. So we are expecting a lot during the summit in Kazan, coming in autumn. And finally, a two-day conference has brought together religious fathers of various countries, members of the diplomatic community, researchers, and other invited guests in Addis Ababa. The conference has been convened primarily to honor and promote interfaith collective action on the African continent. Approached by EBC World, President of the G20 Interfaith Forum, Professor Cole Durham called upon political leaders to navigate through the challenges by working collectively with religious organizations. Tika Sarnisa has attended the event and compiled the following report. Themed interface collective action to foster peace, human dignity, development, prevention of environment, and to counter hate speech, violence, and xenophobia in Africa, United Religious Initiative Africa G20 Interface Forum has taken place on Monday. The conference is also anticipated to discuss the vital roles of religious leaders and faith-inspired organizations in global, national, and local affairs. Approached by ABC World, President of G20 Interfaith Forum, Professor W. Cole Durham indicated that world governments can solve challenges far better when working collectively with religious organizations. One of the things we're conscious of is that practically every area that governments are trying to solve problems, they can do it better if they have if they work collaboratively with religious organizations. In general, uh, what we're trying to do is find ways that religious voices can contribute to making advances and real impacts on the problems in the world. Traditional ruler from Nigeria, King Dr. Michael Odinayo Ajaye, for his part, called on the world to practice what each holy book teaches, which is peace. Essentially, our duty is to maintain peace and peaceful coexistence among people. And what I try to say to people is, all the holy books preach peace, preach good neighborliness, 
and good responsibility. Why then is there a problem in Africa? Why do we have a problem in the world? It means that uh, we are preaching but not practicing what we preach. So I'd like to use the opportunity to talk to our religious leaders and the citizens to imbibe the tenets of each of the only books that they are reading. The leaders further went on saying that the strong should not take advantage of the weak, rather ensure mutual growth and benefit. My message to the world is that people should stop using what is their strength to take advantage of others who are weak. The strong should stop taking advantage of the weak. That's very important. Number two is the fact that living in peace is what can guarantee peace for everybody. If you may be strong today, tomorrow you will be weak. We have had instances of very strong empires all over the world. They are weak today. So it's, the, life is not about how strong you are, but how well you are able to impact on other people's lives and to live well. You know, my, my ultimate message is that uh, for too long, public policy people, government people, are worried about the divisiveness of religion. But frankly, we need to find ways to bring religious voices together to identify shared uh, ideals, things that people can work on together to bring peace, to bring better economic viability, and to solve the general problems of society. The celebration of World Interfaith Harmony Week is expected to promote the teachings of Golden Rule, treat others the way you want them to be treated, which will help foster interfaith engagements and bring people together from across faith and ideology lines and encourage mutual trust. Well, dear viewers, you have been watching ABC World. Now a quick recap of the top stories. Ethiopian envoy says BRICS should create alternative international monetary system. And religious scholars urge world leaders to collaborate with religious organizations to find remedies for challenges facing the globe. Well, dear viewers, that's all the news there is for now. Thanks a lot for watching us. Bye-bye.